something wrong because it was taking some time when we were waiting for the recording to begin. And I, yeah, it started that time. Okay, now it started again. Okay, we'll have to begin all over again. <laughs> 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 Sorry, everyone. This is a repeat telecast. <laughs> okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to class. And, uh, you know, we are looking at chapter three of uh, the book, uh, Receiving God's Guidance. Uh, and, you know, God primarily leads us through the, his scripture, the word of God, and also through the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the scriptures are very important. It's an important way to know what is what God wants us to do, uh, to know his will, to know what is right and wrong in God's um, sight. Okay, so in this chapter, we are going to look at how we can receive guidance and leading through the scripture. Okay, so we're going to look at three scripture passages here. We're going to consider three scripture passages. The first one is Psalm 119, verse 105. The second one, Psalm 119 verse 130 and the third one is psalm 37 verse 31 so let's all read it together again okay psalm 119 verse 105 a lamp to my feet and a light to my part psalm 119 verse 130 the entrance of your words gives light it gives understanding to the simple psalm 37 verse 31 the hope of his heart is in his heart None of his steps shall slide. Okay, so God's word is a lamp to my feet. It, you know, to our feet, it guides us and leads us. Now, for example, if this whole uh, if this campus is pitch dark, you know, I'm sure you won't be very confident to step out because we've heard there are a lot of snakes in this area, and uh, you don't know where you're going to stumble and fall. But if you have a torchlight, you know, I'm sure you'll be willing to step out. The same way in when we travel through life and we journey through life there will be seasons there will be times when we don't know what is uh, happening what next what we need to do you know we are, we are looking for guidance we're looking for direction and you know god's word is the one that will lead us give us the direction okay show us what god's will is psalm 119 verse 130 says that you know god's word enlightens us it gives us light it gives us wisdom it gives us understanding now for example if you, you know somebody brings you into this room and they say go into this room and in this room there are a lot of people here and there are tables with good food and you just enjoy the wonderful decoration in this room and when you enter this room you know there's total pitch darkness you're not able to see the good food you're not able to see the decoration will you be able to enjoy anything in this room no absolutely not right but what happens if people somebody puts on the light then you're able to see others in the room you're able to admire the wonderful decoration and of course you're able to look at a delicious food that your stomach is waiting to you know eat and enjoy okay so the same way god's word you know it it brings light into our situations where there's confusion where there is there is doubt where there is we don't know what to do what step to take what next um so you know it gives us wisdom it gives us understanding on how to go and where to go and what we need to do. Okay, Psalm 37 verse 31 says that God's word establishes our steps. Okay, it makes it firm and it makes it um, secure. God's word is um, unshakable and it's a firm foundation. So when God leads us and guides us, you know, we can be sure that he will lead us in the right way, in the right direction. Okay. Now, there are some common ways that God speaks to us or leads us through his word. So the first one is, um, you know, uh, the instructions in God's word. Okay. Second Timothy chapter three, verses 16 and 17 says, okay, can we all read that together? All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So here it says all scripture. Okay, all scripture means even genealogies, you know, who gave birth to whom. Uh, all scripture even means the difficult ones that we don't understand. All scripture means even Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Okay, so all of scripture is given to us for what? For teaching. Okay, for conviction, that means to convict us. For correction, that means it straightens us, it leads us, it guides us, it directs us. And also it um, 
instructs us. Okay? So God's word also uh, instructs us. Okay. So here we see that, you know, we need to be familiar with all of scripture. Okay? We just should not be reading parts of it and, you know, we shouldn't be taking those parts and trying to, you know, formulate doctrines or, uh, you know, what God wants us to do. But we always have to see one scripture in the light of other scripture passages. We need to read the whole of scripture. We need to discover the whole of scripture. We need to also see what God is telling about a certain aspect from Genesis right up till Revelation. Okay, that's when we will be able to uh, correctly interpret scripture in its context okay so we need to be familiar with uh, scripture what god is talking about uh, regarding various areas of our life now scripture has you know god has already led us and directed us in various areas of our life for example you know i just can't get up one fine day and say god should i love my husband or you know if you're a wife you can't get up and say god should i love my wife okay it's already given in your bible husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and if the wife gets up one morning and says you know God should I really submit to this man who is not being nice to me you know what does God's word say uh, wives submit to your husbands okay so in every area whether it's finances whether it's forgiveness sometimes you say God should I really forgive this person this person you know uh, I keep on forgiving I keep on being loving I keep on uh, doing things but this person doesn't seem to understand is taking me for granted so should I forgive that person now, when you ask God such questions, you know, you might not get an answer because God is saying, hey, I've already written it in my word. How many times you forgive? 70 times? Seven. That means what? Uncountable times. You know, don't keep the number of times that you are forgiving somebody. So, you know, in various areas of our life, God is already, you know, spoken about it in the Bible. We just need to follow. But there are some times, you know, when we really need God's instruction, God's direction, you know, um, then we go back to the Bible, we look at scripture. So that is our starting point. And we need to be aligned to scripture and we need to make our choices based or decisions or guidance based on what scripture says. Okay. So um, does scripture really uh, lead us and guide us in the way that we need to go? Yes. Anyone has any example you can share when you have to make an important decision and, you know, uh, scripture was what helped you. I remember reading one testimony of one person from uh, APC, you know, he said he had an opportunity to join into two uh, multinational companies. Um, one was something called like an ocean something, ocean digital, something like that. Another one had something, you know, a different thing. And so when he was, you know, he was wanting to know from God what uh, exactly, I don't uh, remember the specifics, but, you know, he wanted to know exactly uh, which company he needs to join. So, you know, he started reading the, um, uh, the Bible. And then it says, you know, uh, God was talking about, uh, you know, about the sea and, uh, you know, how uh, life uh, in that passage of scripture is talking about the ocean, the sea, and how life kind of, uh, is uh, growing uh, or uh, thriving in the ocean and then he thought you know this is God speaking to him and telling him that you know he has to join this company which has the name of ocean okay and then after that uh, he made the decision and he said no to the other company and he said yes to this company which had this name ocean and then after that you know he got a, a reply back from uh, this company which he said no to and they said that you know he they will give him a higher position and they would also in you know uh, they'll give him a higher position so he he went back and he started praying and asking god and then he started reading uh, scripture again and uh, and the scripture passage clearly said you know um, uh, don't be in the ocean but get on to the land okay so he he that was you know it was something that was very simple but you know just that phrase just hit him so hard and then you know he decided that he's going to join the other company he said yes to them and um, you know he joined that company they gave him a higher position and they gave him i think um, a 200 percent hike or something like that you know i i, I but there was quite a big, huge hike, which is an impossibility in the in the uh, in the multinational company. And he joined that company, and he you know writes his testimony at apcwo.org, uh, testifying how God led him through uh, Scripture. 
Okay, so God does lead us uh, through scripture how he, um, you know, he wants us to do what he wants us to do. Okay, any of you had any, have any examples to share? Yes, Sean. Okay. Yeah, anything from scripture that you have? No? Okay. So, you know, um, scripture is, you know, the one that you can see the uh, pastor says that anytime he has to make a decision, you know, he gets his answers from scripture. And for me, it's the same, you know, when I read scripture, it's I don't run to X, Y, Z, but, you know, I always go back to God, to his word, his word leads me and guides me. I remember even when I had to make a decision about going to Bible college, you know, I, uh, you know, God was speaking to me and saying, you can't serve God and ma'am and you have to choose one. Okay, and then I need to had to make a decision that I would choose to serve uh, God. Okay, so the instructions of God's word, God instructs us from his word. He leads us and he guides us. Okay, um, the second one, uh, how God leads us and guides us through his word is through the quickened word. Okay, um, you know, when you're looking for guidance uh, from God's word, God quickens his written word in our specific uh, situation now this quickening of god's word can come in different ways uh, like when we are praying for a certain decision and then we go on to read a scripture passage uh, you know that scripture passage exactly addresses your matter directly uh, and you know you receive what god is telling you you receive clarity uh, you begin to know the mind of god uh, with regard to that specific situation okay this can also happen when you are reading scripture you know suddenly when you're reading scripture your son you know sometimes i don't know if you have just felt some scripture passages just leap up at you you know some just some words just come and hit you 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 receive a new revelation uh maybe some familiar scripture but you know a fresh new revelation say oh i never thought of this before or sometimes you just leap up at you and then you say oh this is what god is speaking to me this is the answer to my uh, uh to my problem or to my uh, uh, uh to my solution to my problem like when i was uh, you know when i was getting ready to go to bible college i had so many questions how you know i'm going to handle finances where i'm going to get my finances how i'm going to go alone to bible college how am i going to handle things and you know god spoke to me while i was just reading god's word and this verse just leapt at me he who called you is faithful and he will do it for you you know, he who called you is faithful and he will do it for you. And I just held on to that scripture. So even now being in ministry, you know, um, um, I've seen God's faithfulness the six years I studied in Bible college. I kept on saying this verse anytime I had a need. Even now being in ministry, you know, I constantly when um, when I'm in need or lacking something, uh, you know, um, you know, this verse comes back to my mind. You know, the promise that God gave me. This is like a promise verse for me, like. You know, he who called you is faithful and he will do it for uh, you. Okay. Uh, so, you know, uh, we're reading scripture some, sometimes, you know, just scripture passages or verses or a word can just sleep out of the Bible and can just, you know, hit you and just speak to you and you receive an answer from, uh, from God. Okay. Uh, the other times, you know, you're go just going through your daily routine. Uh, you're also worried about some decision, something about your family, something in your life. You have to make some decision. You know, you're just going about it and you're wondering, you know, what I need to do or what step do I need to take? Uh, you know, and suddenly, you know, you're, you're doing your normal routine, you know, your daily work, but suddenly the word of God just comes like a, like a flash, like a lightning. I remember, you know, just recently, Recently, uh, recent past, uh, um, I was wondering about some something about my health. I was wondering what I need to do, whether I should do this, I should do that. Uh, I was totally confused. I was, um, you know, uh, uh, looking for guidance, and you know, and this was just boom came into my head. The so God is telling me, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding so god is saying don't lean on your own understanding thinking what this and that you know just trust in me in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your your paths proverbs chapter three okay and uh, another thing that happened recently you know i was um, i had gone to the hospital i just did a scan and uh, the doctors were pretty shocked with uh, something that they found in my body and uh, they were saying how did you not know all these years and all that and i too was pretty shocked but i had this amazing 
peace. I had just joy. Actually, the doctors were looking terrified at me, but I was just smiling and I had just laughing. I had just this peace of God. And then, then I came out and, you know, uh, my body is lacking something. And I say, God, you know, I'm lacking something very important. And now what do I do now? And boom, the, uh, the, the thing that comes, you know, God is saying, I'm your portion. You know, this is what God tells the Levites in the Old Testament. You know, God says, I am your portion. You don't have, you don't even need a portion of the land. Don't give the, you know, all the tribes of Israel got a portion of the land excepting the Levites. You know, they were supposed to get the best portion of the land, but God was saying, no, I am your portion. And like, God, what do I do now? And God is saying, you know, I am your portion. And that just gave me an amazing sense of peace. So anytime I am, you know, kind of uh, feeling a little sun in my body and saying, God, you are my portion, you know, you're going to do this for me. And also, you know, that uh, when I came out of that room, uh, the diagnosis, you know, this this overwhelming peace was there. And I, I was just thinking about God is taking me through that, uh, you know, the instance where the storm, you know, the disciples were in the, in the boat with Jesus in the storm. And, uh, you know, Jesus was a total peace. And he said, Shh, be still, you know, be calm, be quiet. And I just sensed that, you know, how the disciples would have felt in that moment when there was a storm. And suddenly this word of God coming in my in my spirit saying that, you know, I am your portion, an amazing sense of supernatural peace. And I was like, and God is telling me, this is the kind of peace the disciples experienced when I still the storm. So you maybe you're facing a storm in this area of your life, in your health. But, you know, I am your peace. Uh, I will still it. I will make it uh, calm. So, you know, just... So we're going about our daily routine. I'm in the hospital. Nobody's there. You know, I was all alone by myself. Uh, but this is what God is just, you know, so profoundly um, speaking. So it's just wonderful, you know, how God just brings in uh, scripture passages like that to your memory, to your word. But for that, you need to meditate on God's word. You need to read God's um, word. So, you know, uh, God gives us direction and leading to his word, but we need to obey it. We need to follow it we need to hold on to it okay i held on to that promise saying god you said you are faithful you will do it you do this for me i don't have this finances i don't have this i don't have that you do it and god has been more than faithful okay on page number 35 uh, going on to page number 36 and on top of page number 37 are some few examples that uh, pastor has given about his own life so i'd like you all to read it later on not now during the class Okay, um, you can re read it later on. Okay, so third thing that uh, how God um, um, uh, leads us through his word. First one is the instruction of his word. Second one is to the quickening of his word. Okay, the third one is to the word preached. Okay, so, um, you know, God leads us to the preaching of his word. So when we're going to... Um, uh, church, you know, you're going with a burden, you're going with some struggle, you're going with some anxiety, some problem. And, you know, the preacher is just preaching. But, you know, you just feel like it's God speaking to you. You know, something he says, you know, I'm sure all of us have experienced that, right? You just feel, sense that God is just giving you the answer. He's just speaking to your spirit or, you know, the worship or some worship song, one line in the worship just hits you and you're like, you know, oh, this is my answer, you know, uh, this is uh, this is what God is speaking to me. And sometimes, you know, the preacher is just speaking. He's saying the same thing, but, you know, the, uh, the, the, the same words can minister to different people in different context in different situations it's not just one person but many people who are coming with many different kind of problems they can experience the, uh, the answers they can experience um, uh, you know um, uh, 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 you know um, they can receive um, guidance for their uh, problems they can receive guidance in their life so we see simultaneously on various matters god's word speaks okay so god can um, uh, you know, uh, God can give you his word through the word that is preached. Through the word that is preached, God can speak to you and he can speak simultaneously to different people at the same time. Of course, a preacher doesn't know. He's just preaching, but he doesn't know that, you know, so many people are just receiving. And that is the power of God's uh, word. OK, so sometimes also, you know, we are listening to uh, sub suppose you say you've listened to Sunday sermon by Pastor Rashish and then, you know, you go back home and then you listen to other preachers that you like uh, other sermons. 
And then, you know, uh, you know, through the week, you're also listening to uh, some Bible college lectures and you, you feel that all of them are telling you the kind of the same thing. And you feel that, you know, God is really speaking to me. He's giving me um, answers to my problem or he's just uh, encouraging me or he's strengthening me or he's guiding me or he's just helping me to cope with the situation or he's just leading me on in the direction that I need to go in life. So the third way God leads us through his um, uh, through his word, through scripture, is through the preaching of his word. So as the, you know, as uh, uh, the word is preached and it falls on your heart, you know that God has spoken, he's giving you guidance and direction that you are seeking. So, you know, but it's, you receive all this from God, but it's important for you to act on it and important for you to obey it. And when you receive a promise, it's important for you to, you know, speak over your situations okay god's promises are yes and amen but what we need to do is we need to speak it over our situations okay the fourth one how god leads us is to the inner voice what is the inner voice it's your conscience okay our conscience is our inner voice you know sometimes when you're doing wrong it says hey what you're doing is wrong okay <laughs> what you're doing is wrong what you said is wrong. What you're thinking is wrong. What you're watching is wrong. So what is that? That's the voice of your conscience. Okay. Now, uh, we are made up of man is made up of spirit, soul, and body. Okay. Our soul is made up of mind, will, and emotions. Okay. So God speaks to us through just like our, um, our physical body has the five senses. What are the five senses? Touch. You can see, feel, taste, okay, uh, hear, okay, so all of that. In the same way, our spirit man also has these senses. Our spirit man can hear, our spirit man can see, our spirit man can feel what God is telling us to, uh, guiding us. It can also taste, taste and see that the Lord is good. Okay, how do you taste and see that the Lord is good? You don't taste it, you know, the tongue, but it's to your spirit man. So your spirit man has uh, senses okay so the uh, your conscience is your voice okay your conscience speaks to you and there are three references here from job chapter uh, i'm i'm on page number 38 okay there are three references here job chapter 32 was 8 psalm 51 was 6 proverbs chapter 20 was 27 and you know uh, if you look at, um, you know, Job chapter 32, verse 8, it says, the spirit in man is the breath of the Almighty. Okay, God's breath, you know, God breathes into our human spirit. And when he breathes, he's actually causing us to know his wisdom uh, in our spirit man. He's guiding us and leading us. Now, if you remember when we did, uh, you know, uh, that principle, one of the nine guideposts, you know, stirring in our hearts. Remember, I, I, I spoke about all of these um, uh, passages and I said how our spirit man is a lamb and how God speaks to us, okay? So uh, remember, and then the next class, I think many of them did not understand, so I explained it again to some of you in Hindi. So I'm not going to explain all of this here again. You can go back um, uh, to that same, um, you know, lecture and you can listen to it. So, you know, our, our spirit man is a lamb. That means God guides us and leads us. And our spirit man also, you know, is uh, something that, you know, um, uh, God searches out and God leads us. Through our spirit, you know, God searches what is there in our hearts, in our minds. That's in our spirit man. That's why, you know, God created as spirit beings. Why? Because he's a spirit being and the Holy Spirit relates to us in our spirit man. That's why when we are born again, we are born again in our spirit. Okay. So uh, in our spirit man, God um, searches us and it's in the spirit that he also guides us and leads us. And I've explained quite a bit about this when we did a uh, stirring in our hearts. Remember I said, I gave you a lot of passages in scripture and i said it's not there in your textbook but you know uh, but i just wanted to explain that okay so i'm not going to explain that again but if you look at romans chapter 2 verse 15 at the bottom of uh, page number um, 38 it says our conscience bears witness or speaks a line to what has been written in our hearts okay which means 
that you know when we are trained to uh, read god's word feed on god's word when we meditate on god's word and we live in obedience to god's word and we live in sub uh, in submission to god's word you know our conscience comes in alignment with god's word and so sometimes our conscience can also lead us and guide us and you know we can uh, you know we can depend on our conscience at those times why because we are people who are constantly reading meditating god's word god's word is in our heart and is in our mind and when when we do that you know our conscience automatically is aligned to god's word why because we are feeding our spirit soul body with god's mind our, god's mind is in our uh, god's word is in our mind god's word is in our heart you know and so uh you know our conscience automatically will be aligned to god's word okay and that time we can know that our conscience is reliable you know we can depend on our conscience to lead us and guide us so sometimes when we look at people we can say we say you know uh, doesn't their conscience tell them what they're doing is wrong you know how can they just go and keep on murdering people go and keep on killing people or you know, keep on speaking bad words why because their conscience is so dead and their conscience is also not having the word of god in them okay so sometimes even believers like that they saying they're born again believers but if you look at their lives the jealousy hatred pride um, you know there's so much of wrath there's so much of anger unforgiveness uh, gossiping and why is all that you say hey this person is born again baptized but you know there doesn't their conscience prick them but it's because their conscience uh, they they are not feeding their minds and their hearts and their spirit man with the word of god you know they're just saying okay we're born again hallelujah praise the lord we're going to heaven but they're not spending time reading god's word so with the more we read god's word the more our conscience actually you know uh, is reliable we can depend on our conscience all of you with me understanding okay so that's a promise that we have in the new covenant as new covenant believers we all belong to the new covenant okay who established the new covenant jesus christ how did he establish it with his blood okay and we read in hebrews chapter 8 verses 10 to 11 it says uh, you know um, god, god promises us that in the new covenant god will write his laws or his word upon our heart and our mind okay and each one will know the lord remember the promise that uh, god gave in the old testament in ezekiel he said i will remove their heart of stone and i will give them a heart of flesh and i will put my laws in their heart and in their mind and i will put my spirit in them and my spirit will cause them to obey all of my laws and why did god say that because he knew that these people were not able to keep the laws why because they just couldn't do it in their own strength of their sinful flesh okay so god is saying i will give remove that heart of stone give them a heart of flesh i will write my laws upon their heart and mind and i will put my spirit and my spirit will cause them to obey and keep the laws of god okay so here this promise the new covenant you know god will write his heart uh, words in our heart and mind and that's very important because our conscience some most of the time we're listening to our conscience right the conscience tells us to do something we do it if our conscience tells us it's okay you can just do it we go ahead and do it even though we know it is um, sin okay so we need to learn to listen to our conscience but we need to ask ourselves is our conscience pure and clear is my conscience pure and clear or, or, or unholy sometimes our conscience we can be born again but our conscience is still you know still needs to be renewed because you know our conscience is part of our soul right and our soul and our body is still not born again we need to keep on renewing it every day okay so you know um uh, you know we need to uh, uh, work on that how do we do it by reading god's word daily meditating on it filling our hearts and mind with god's word okay the next thing is we need to rightly divide the word of god okay second timothy chapter 2 verse 15 says can somebody read it please Okay, so here, how do we handle God's word? First one, you don't need to be ashamed. Okay, 
Uh, sorry, Nina, I didn't understand your question. Okay, it's conscious part of your spirit, man. Okay, you said it's part of your soul. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, first one, what do we do to be approved ourselves by God? How do we handle God's word correctly? First one, we rightly divide it. That means we expound it correctly. Okay, we expound means what? We interpret it correctly. Okay, uh, when we interpret scripture, you will learn how to interpret scripture, I think, next semester or maybe next year, the first semester, how to interpret scripture. Okay, that's very, very important. Okay, and also, you know, you need to know how to interpret scripture rightly. Uh, we also see that scripture is the word of truth. Okay, God's the word of truth, it's God's truth. Okay, so God is not responsible when we misinterpret or when we misapply his word, okay? We need to correctly understand God's word, and when we correctly uh, understand God's word, it will lead us to correctly interpret his word. But if we, uh, we are incorrect in our, uh, you know, in our expounding of scripture and interpretation of scripture, it will lead to misapplication. Okay, an incorrect understanding of God's word from that. That's how, you know, wrong doctrines and strange doctrine comes. So it's important for us, you know, um, I think next semester you will learn about systematic theology. And in systematic theology, you will see how, you know, you will be studying different doctrines, but how you need to study uh, each doctrine in the light of the entire scripture. Not just taking it from the New Testament, but also looking at it from the Old Testament okay so when you're studying something it, you need to look at the entire scripture because second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 says all scripture is inspired by God okay and then the last point here is you know don't misuse scripture you know don't take scripture out of isolation and make your own theories and make your own uh, interpretations and um, you know try to live that you now many people they uh, take God's promises and they say, okay, this is God's promise. You know, God said, um, no, don't be anxious about or worried about everything because, you know, in Matthew chapter 6, he says, why are you worried about your clothes, the food you eat? You know, look at the birds of the air, the lilies of the field. Uh, and God says, you know, um, uh, all these things will be added to you. Okay. And, uh, you know, they, uh, so they take out all the promises from God's word and they're wondering why God's promise is not coming true in their life. Did you know that, you know, before every promise or in some passages of scripture, after every promise, there is a command. Okay. So before every promise, there is a command. Take, for example, Matthew 6, 33. What does it say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. But people don't want to see the first bit. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. They want they always think, okay, God will add all this for us. What is all this? You know, food, clothing, everything he'll give us. But when we give us the command is seek ye first the kingdom of God. No, God, God says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then Ask whatever you uh, want and it will be done for you. So you say, oh, ask whatever you want, it will be done. So let me ask God, it should be done. God, it should be done. They say, why, you know, but God is saying, why is not happening? What's the reason? What's the command? Abide in me and if my words abide in you, then, okay? So sometimes in, in scripture, we find the command before the promise and sometimes we find the promise given and then the Come on. So, you know, we can't just misuse scripture by saying, okay, you know, I just uh, hold on to these promises, but if we are not obeying the command, the promises does not come true in our life. For example, you know, only after Abraham went to the place that God showed him to do, then he received the promise. The promise became a reality. Okay, the same with us when we look at God's word um, as well. Okay. Uh, so we need to, you know, uh, sometimes we play with scripture. For example, we'll just take the Bible. We want to know something. God, I really want to know what to do about this situation. So please speak to me. Or, you know, you just open the Bible and say, God, 
whichever it's an open or first whatever verse it falls you know and then sometimes it's very funny i don't know if you've tried doing that it's it's very you know it's really funny you can laugh at yourself sometimes and then you know okay okay this might not be the verse but god is opening me to uh, you know jeremiah chapter 3 so let me read the whole scripture and try to find it this then answer now you can't play with god's word like this Okay, God's word is there for us to read, meditate, study his word, live by his word and not play by his word. Sometimes, you know, we just say, okay, you know, we use God's word as a charm. When we're scared about something, we keep it under a pillow, we keep it be beside us and we say, okay, you know, Satan is troubling me in the night, giving me bad dreams, I'm seeing this darkness, I feel something is covering over me, I'll keep the Bible. Hey, you know, you need to, you need to speak God's word what is the um, the sword of the uh, the armor of god it's the word of god so you can't take okay my i'll take my sword and do this 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 and the darkness will go no you have to speak the word of you have to speak the word of god and where is satan where is satan he's underneath your feet that's what the word of god says satan is underneath your feet but for some of us he's above there because we are under him you know so we need to uh, know our authority we need to use god's word correctly and not play with god's word okay sometimes you're going to preach and say god i have to go and preach uh, i don't really know what to preach so i'm just going to open whichever chapter you're showing me i'm going to uh, i believe that is going to be the one that you are going to show me i mean you know i, I have preached many times and um, you know i don't do that but i i do go and ask god god i don't know the audience I don't know the people's need. It might be the same church, APC, but I'm going to preach there. What do you want me to preach? And just God will give me one download and, you know, you just go and um, you prepare on that. You look at scriptures, you study the whole of scriptures, and then you go and give your message. Not just closing your eye and opening and whatever passage comes, you are uh, doing that. Okay. So, um, you know, there's a nice example given here, very interesting about a young man who's in love with a, uh, with a girl and every scripture passage he's reading he's looking yeah. at you know her in that so he's yeah. sending her all of these scripture passages and she's reading it and she's poor thing is not able to find any uh, meaning in that and he says see see pre properly read this is what god is saying but i can't understand you know so you know sometimes we can play with scripture we can misuse scripture which is not the right and a dangerous thing for us to uh, do Okay, so we need to, um, you know, scripture is um, God's way of leading us, guiding us, you know, giving us the revelations he wants us to do, knowing his will, knowing what He uh, is right and wrong, and doing that. Okay, so this is how scripture leads us. It leads us, the first one is instruction in God's word. Okay, um, second one is through um, the word, uh, the quickening of God's word, you know, God will give you, you're going through a problem, you're going through a difficulty, just a quickening like this. You know, if you're in your spirit, man, it's just profound, it's just wonderful. It just comes boom like this, you know, and it, it, it's just so wonderful. Third one is through the preaching of God's word. Fourth one is through your inner voice, your conscience. But for your conscience, uh, you know, to uh, be, have the ability to guide you in the right way, your conscience should be, um, you know, uh, kind of... Um, soaked in okay with the word of god so when you're feeding your heart and your mind your conscience is also in alignment to that because you're reading god's word and you're also submitting to god's word okay so any questions anyone has any questions uh there are some examples given there by pastor i'm sure all of you have read it because uh, you know you've already done an uh, assignment but I would request our online students to read um, pastor's example so you will understand better. I just gave my life examples, but you can read uh, pastor's example as well. Okay. Okay, the fourth chapter, we'll move on to the fourth chapter, page 43. Anyone has any questions? Okay. Uh, the next way God leads us is through the inner witness of his spirit. How God leads us and guides us is through scripture and this word and through the inner witness of the holy spirit in john chapter 14 verse 16 jesus promised that i will send you another helper okay john chapter 14 verse 16 jesus promised he said i will send you another helper and who is that other helper the holy spirit 
If you notice, the helper there is not with a small H. Okay, when it's small H it refers to human beings, but it's a capital H which refers to um, the deity, the Holy Spirit. Okay, uh, so Jesus, uh, who is our good shepherd, is also a guide, but the Holy Spirit is also a guide. He leads us and uh, guides us, but we need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Let's look at John chapter 16, verses 13 uh, to 14. You know, um, it says, however, when he, who is the he? Yeah, the Holy Spirit. See, notice the capital H. Wherever you notice a capital H, it will be referring to either Jesus or God or to the Holy Spirit. But you need to see it in context. Here it's speaking about the Holy Spirit. So the capital H is referring to the Holy Spirit. So when he, the Spirit of Truth, so who is the, the Spirit of Truth? The Holy Spirit, okay, has come. He will guide you into all truth. Now the word guide means show you the way. Okay, show you the way, show you which way to take, uh, to, uh, you need to take. So the Holy Spirit will guide you. Secondly, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. Okay, the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. Um, he can and will also guide us personally uh, in what is pleasing and acceptable to God. We will look at how... Uh, the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, leads us into what is pleasing and acceptable uh, to God in all the decisions that we make. And also he says here very beautifully, but whatever he hears, he will speak. That means what? Whatever he hears, he will speak means whatever the Holy Spirit hears from Jesus, he will reveal it to us. So he actually, the Holy Spirit actually reveals to us the mind of Christ. We will learn about that in a little bit. Okay. And also he will tell us the things to come. So not only he guides us now in the present, not only he will show us what is the truth, uh, not only he will tell us what is good, pleasing and the perfect will of God, what is acceptable in God's sight. But there's an amazing thing that we can learn here is the Holy Spirit will reveal ahead of time what, you know, Jesus uh, has planned and purpose for our lives. He will communicate to us. He'll speak to us. Um, and, uh, you know, um, uh, it's a wonderful thing. So you can say, God, I want to experience this. Okay. Don't say, wow, it's wonderful. And just let it be in the Bible. But you say, God, you know, you gave the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is my teacher, is my helper. And it says that the Holy Spirit will guide me. He will guide me into all truth. He will uh, speak and reveal what is in your mind to me. He will also tell me about my future god this is so wonderful thank you but you know just don't say thank you and wonderful and leave it but say god i want to experience this another thing that you can add to your prayer is this verse remember i was saying that there are many things that we can learn how to pray in in, in the previous classes i said you know we're learning so many things but you can there's so many things you can learn how to pray one of the things that you can learn how to pray is you can say this holy spirit guide me Holy Spirit, guide me into all truth. Show me what's a good, pleasing, perfect will of God. And also tell me the things to come. You know, Pastor says that he actually plans 10 years ahead for his of his life. He'll write down everything he wants to do the next 10 years. And he asks the Holy Spirit to breathe on it, to guide him, to lead him. So you and I can also do it. Others, we won't know what we're going to do in the next year. We'll be totally clueless. We'll be like people walking in the dark, you know. So you can ask the Holy Spirit and he will guide you about your future. He will tell you the things to come. Amen. Are you all excited? I'm quite excited about it. Okay. So you can pray that. Okay. And um, uh, say, God, I want to experience this in my own life. Okay. We'll uh, take a break here and we'll come back and we'll continue with chapter four. Amen.